So maybe you've wondered why experienced teachers seem to know it all about their subject. The answer is self-explanation, and I'm going to tell you how you can get the most out of self-explanation to learn new knowledge and new skills, and how you as a teacher can use it to maximise the progress of your class. See, when teachers are first learning their craft, they have to work really hard to practise their explanations. They have to practise the way they explain how to work through problems, the way they explain how to understand concepts. And it's that practice, that work of self-explanation that makes them fluent in the classroom. Self-explanation is a really important habit to get into. So what they do is they practice out loud. They actually think to themselves, how am I gonna explain this? And they work through that explanation out loud to themselves. And when they have to pause and say, um and er, uh, they realize I don't really understand it as well as I need to, to make sure I give a fluent explanation to my students. So as a student, if you wanna get fluent, if you want to get fluent enough to get the very highest grades in exams, you need to practice that same technique yourself. It's the best way to learn new skills and learn new knowledge. And don't just take my word for it, it's one of Dunlosky's top five learning tips. So that's an awful lot of evidence to say this is the best way to learn new knowledge. So thanks a lot to OkioCam for sponsoring this video. This is the OkioCam S, it's a student-centered visualizer. It's not expensive, it's one of the cheapest visualizers you can buy, but it doesn't skimp on quality either. It's really easy to set up and use, and it does one of the most important things for education technology. It's not hard to use, and so it gets out of the way of the learning. OkioCam have made some really good, simple to use software for students, and I know that your students are gonna love using the record function, just making their own explainer videos, as well as making time lapses, and importantly, stop motion animations. I know that they'll love doing that. It's such a fun way to work through an explanation. So I had a go at making a stop motion animation with the OkioCam software. There's basically no learning curve at all and you can expect your students to pick this up really quickly. You just get a ghost of each previous image and you can either hit the space bar or you can click the little snapshot to take the next frame. Also, the software is just a Chrome browser extension. It just launches in the browser. There's no need to even install it on the computer. And that's ideal because schools who are buying laptops for students will probably go down the Chromebook route. So here is my really quick explanation of why radioactive isotopes decay. Radioactive isotopes decay to become more stable. I've done a lot of this type of teaching in my time. It's best to think about a group of two or three lessons where your class are gonna actually go through this process of self-explanation. But by taking them through that process, remember you're teaching them the habit of doing this in the future. So maybe the first lesson starts by the students actually planning an explanation. Planning not really how to do it, but what's the best way through that explanation. The second lesson might be them actually executing that. Might be them actually playing about with these visualizers, making a stop motion, recording a voiceover and putting it together in some simple video editing software or just saving it as a clip that they can talk over in the lesson ahead. And the final lesson should be a really low pressure and fun lesson where everyone is just sharing what they've made. And students love that. They love actually sharing something that they've made and it's lower pressure and they definitely learn better from each other than they do from you, as long as the quality is there. And it's a lot lower pressure than other types of presentation lessons because they've prepared something that should just be stand up at the front and press play. And I really love getting students to give each other really positive feedback and say, well done, I really like this about that. I really followed that explanation. I really liked the way that was structured. I'm going to try that myself in the future. So kids enjoy developing that explanation, they enjoy actually making the thing, and then they enjoy sharing and giving each other lots of praise. But the most important thing, the reason why it's so useful to be doing in the classroom is it has a massive impact on your results. Because by students learning to do self-explanation, they learn to talk themselves through explanations. They learn to talk themselves through ways of actually solving problems. And that is such a valuable skill for any type of independent learning, where the students can actually work through things on their own and they're less dependent on you, the teacher, to make sense of all this material. And you know, I think the great thing about this OkioCam system is it's making an inexpensive visualizer that actually puts the technology in the hands of the students. And right now, with the world as it is today, with hybrid learning, remote learning, and blended learning going on, I think that's an incredibly invaluable thing. So really quickly, OkioCam has a T and an S model. The OkioCam T stands for teacher. That's the teacher model. And it's really useful for you as a teacher to be able to do hybrid learning. What is hybrid learning? 
It's when you're actually teaching the same lesson to the kids in front of you in the classroom and those who are perhaps having to self-isolate at home. Visualizers are an ideal way to do that because you can model in the same way in the classroom and it translates really well over the internet to the kids who are having to learn at home. I've been using these for a couple of weeks now and I find them incredibly easy to use. And most importantly, students find them easy to use as well. In the future though, students having a visualizer might be more of a conscious choice. And actually we might have true blended learning where a teacher actually plans the things to deliver remotely and the things to keep for them in the classroom. I can imagine students consuming much more knowledge at home on their own with these new independent learning skills that they will have developed through this time. And then when they come into the classroom, they can do far more of these engaging and creative things. So simply put, how self-explanation is gonna work in your classroom is to have students actually make and share explanations of the concepts in your lesson on their own. Have them enjoy that process of developing explanations. And that's powerful for two reasons. The first and most important one is that when they stumble and um and er, uh, they realize the bits they didn't get and then they are forced to actually understand them to explain them out loud. But also it makes for really memorable lessons and that's important. Anything like this comes with a little bit of a health warning that the process can get in the way of the learning. It's important to consider your own class and your own situation before you decide to do something like this. If the complexity of the task gets in the way of the complexity of the learning, then perhaps it isn't the thing to be doing with that class or for that topic. I wouldn't want you to think that this is a teaching method that solves every problem, but it's great for some topics and for some situations. And it's great to develop students to get into the habit of self-explanation so they figure out bits they do get and what they don't get. And you'll notice if you do more and more of this that students start to ask you really key and targeted questions rather than just coming with you and saying things like, I don't get any of this, sir. And that's gold. When students are coming to you with bits they do and don't get, that's when you know it's going well. The nice thing about the OkioCam system, the way they've developed their visualizers and their software, is they've developed it to be incredibly student friendly. And the software and the technical aspects just get out of the way of the learning and the students can focus on developing their knowledge, their understanding and their skills. And I promise you this technique will develop their skills more than any other.